Hi, Frank. It's great to have you here. And uh, you've been in um, applying ACT uh, to organization areas uh, since, since day one. And uh, I'm curious, like, over the course of the last, say, about 20 years, I guess, um, how has your approach to um, psychological interventions uh, in, this, uh, in this area changed? Uh, what did you believe in the beginning that evolved over time or was, was completely altered? I mean, I think that's a very good question. And um, I think certainly um, it has altered over time. I mean, I have stayed within a contextual behavioral science community or uh, perspective. And that is the one from which ACT stems. And so you're right in saying that ACT has always formed the uh, central part in what I do. But I think that what has changed is a couple of things. One is that um, the appreciation that act in and of itself, that is focusing on the individual, on his or her ability to cope in a situation, to um, interact with uh, difficult feelings and difficult events, whilst very important, is just one part of the picture that there is a more complete picture that we have to look at. And that is the uh, context in which that person is interacting. Uh, so that is the nature of the organization in which they're working. It doesn't matter if it's a small one with four people or a very large organization. Still, the structure, the processes, the strategy, and of course, the leadership uh, the management styles and practices will have a very great impact on the way that people um, perform, the way their quality of life is, and even as lots of research over the past 40, 45 years have shown, whether or not they live or die, I mean, uh, the amount of control that a person has over how they do their work. Uh, has been shown in the Scandinavian countries and in the UK as well as being a, as good a predictor of death by cardiovascular disease as is smoking. So to uh, kind of say that or to ignore or not focus on uh, those core organizational aspects such as say job control is uh, a big problem and that that is something that I think coaches, applied psychologists or anyone working with an organization needs to be able to focus on in addition to trying to help individuals themselves to relate better to the work that they're doing. Uh, you know, like the, uh, the distinctions uh, between two contexts, the individual one and the general like organizational one is interesting because people have been asking me like to who act is loyal to you know like uh, the individual the, the individual person might might not want to be squeezed like a lemon but on the other hand the employer might want to increase the productivity and demand certain things from the individuals they hire um, where does ACT stand on this, in this topic? Well, I think, you know, ACT comes from a very pragmatic uh, philosophical point of view. And that is, you know, what is, what is it that you want, um, you know, to accomplish? What is it that you want to achieve? And my guess is that uh, many organizations, uh, if they want to have uh, sustained levels of productivity, of innovation, uh, they also need to pay attention to the individuals themselves. That is that I don't think that you can really separate out the organization and the individual uh, who works there so that um, you can design systems that are going to select people 
who are going to be a, a good match for that organization because there's some people who simply you know will not work well um, in certain types of environments for example for me uh, I would do very very poorly in uh, certain types of restricted and restrained environments and you wouldn't want to hire me at all uh, and I think part of what a consultant can do is to use psychometric testing to select people who are going to be right for that environment. But once you get them in there, then um, the need to develop them, to lead them, uh, to motivate them is going to be extraordinarily important as well and to help them to discover uh, what it is that they're working for, to get them to relate better to uh, the purpose of what they're trying to accomplish, uh, not only in their own world, in their own lives, but the organization itself. And I think that oftentimes the purpose that uh, a person is working for in a particular company is not always spelt out well. And that in and of itself is very demoralizing. That's very uh, troubling. So I think there are lots of things that managers and organizations can do better uh, that will have a great impact. However, if an organization's aim is merely to squeeze the lifeblood out of people and uh, just, you know, get them, work them to death and then get in a new group of people and repeat the cycle, well, then that's not going to work very well. However, what we do know is that organizations who do work that way typically do not do so very well very effectively for very long. So it's usually not to their advantage to doing so. Uh, rather, it's using principles, say, that we get from ACT and other aspects of contextual behavioral science that can increase the probability that you can motivate a person to work very well. That person will find it very fulfilling and thus will perform um, over time in a way that's going to be effective and useful for not only the person but for the organization as well. Right, so what you're saying is that uh, ACT could um, give uh, coaches an ability not only to predict uh, an employee behavior basing on psychometric tests but also find ways to influence their behavior and align them more closely with what management wants and also to align the management with the needs of the of the employees that they have. Yeah, that and true? I think that's right. I think they go together. That is the alignment. Um, that is that the organization has to be very clear as to what it is that they're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, that is, what is th this person in this role supposed to be doing and how does it further the aims of the organization as well as the individual, him or herself? So that um, a good leader, say, uh, can coach or a coach themselves uh, working with an organization can say, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? How can the manager or the leader uh, treat the person as a person? That is to say, what is important to you? What do you wish to get out of the work that you're doing? And how is what uh, the company is asking you to do? How can that help further what it is that you're trying to do? Uh, I think that's very, very important. And, and indeed, it's something that we see. I do a lot of work with our Olympic athletes in the UK. And obviously, those people who are working um, and training day and night for years and years and years, uh, they're very motivated people. And they want to do well. But one thing that is important is the coach 
and the coaching staff themselves. That is that those athletes don't need a lot of motivation, uh, unlike many workers in other industries. However, what's still important for those highly motivated athletes is that the coach, or one might say their leader or manager, is um, taking an interest in some individual aspect of that athlete, of that person, of that employee, so that the person or the employee is not treated merely as a robot or a piece of meat to be squeezed and to be used until there's nothing left in them and they can be thrown out. Um, in the world of Olympics, and in other elite uh, areas, there aren't enough people to be able to treat them so poorly. So you need to be able to actually act like a human being and to ask, you know, how are things going? How are you finding things? What is it that um, is important to you and what we're doing? And how can we help you as an individual develop in some way? In other words, I think a lot of what needs to be done, and coaches are very, very well placed to do this, is to train managers how to relate as a human being to another human being. And uh -huh. that is something that's scary to do, uh, but that is uh, through our research and our practice is seem to be very important.